blues fan, you know, went looking for live blues wherever I could find it. And, the, you know, St. Louis has traditionally had a really good scene. It's gotten a little thin this past few years because people keep passing away, unfortunately. And at the time, I think BB's Jazz, Blues, and Soups, kind of their premier club that advertises, you know, the most obvious club anyway, um, had just reopened and they were doing a lot of local artists and it was good, but there weren't any like real juke joint type places that I'd run across. And one day I was in a place called University City, which is just a suburb of St. Louis basically. I was at a rec little independent record store. And there was a homemade flyer, like with all the stuff people hang up, there's this homemade flyer. It just looked cool and it said, Quimmy's Western Inn. And it said, where Mississippi folks come to hear real blues. And I'm thinking, huh, you know, they're talking about like Mississippi transplants. I'm like, well, we gotta go check this out. So I called the number, realized it was in a really bad section of town called Pagedale, just like an industrial area. I was like, you know what, let's go down there. So I went down, because it said Big George and the House Rockers, and I'd never even heard of them. Really, the building was shaking. You could hear the band inside. Not George, but just the band, uh, Riley Cody and the House Rockers. They were doing some kind of almost hound dog tailor sound or kind of thing. And so we got in there, and the guy at the door is like, you're the ones you called, aren't you? Because, you know, like the only white people. <laughs> it's like, yeah, how'd you know? You know. So we went in. And the band just sounded fantastic. And went into the bar and then went into the room where the music was. And we sit down and I'm thinking, this is it. I'm thinking, you know, this is great, but it's just the band, nobody's singing. So they did a couple instrumentals and then all of a sudden you hear this harmonica come from somewhere. Like George, before the band starts, you hear these, these random kind of, it's like, you know, you're looking around, it's coming through the PA, didn't see him. So, okay, we'll see what happens here. So then he starts a song, the band kicks in and he comes, the ladies room was down in the basement. So here he comes, his legs are better than he comes up the steps out of the ladies' room in the basement, you know, all dressed in his three piece suit and hat, and his blowing harmonica, and just, you know, there's like the whole system's kind of st distorting because the band's so loud. And the place just erupted, it went crazy. And it was all like older black audience, you know, just went nuts. And it's just the electric, the electricity in the air, it's just unreal. So we went there a few times to see him, and then the place closed. Um, he played there every Saturday night for 12 years, what, what he told me. And uh, we lost track of him because I didn't have his number or anything. And, you know, the truth of the matter is, you know, he's, he had always played black blues clubs. Well, I keep doing my cup. It, just, it, it actually makes me feel better when I play the blues. And when I get on the bench and I don't have no pain, and, and then as long as I'm just walking around, I, you know, that I can feel the pain. But when I'm on the bench and I feel real good. Yeah, yeah, the power of the blues, he says. Yeah, the power of the blues. I guess that's what it does, because it's something I really love. Yeah, ain't that a pity? Thank we do to do. 
Big George was great because I mean he'd got he'd, he'd been so involved in it as a performer, as somebody who ran clubs and promoted gigs himself as well, and he'd lived such an incredibly interesting life that uh, it was just the whole tour was just fascinating because he'd just keep coming out with things about people and uh, telling stories. And as a performer, he was for his, again, but like Mojo, for somebody in his late seventies, the energy they can get into a performance. You know, that's a lesson to be learned as well, you know. Um, uh, and, he, and George in particular was larger than life, as you, when you saw him, you know, I mean, all the different coloured suits every night. And uh, so he was amazing. I mean, it was a lesson, you know. The blues ain't nothing but the truth. The blues ain't nothing but the fatty truth now. Because anything you sing about in a blues style, it's something somebody did, they're going to do, it's happening now. The blues ain't nothing but the truth. It should make anybody good to feel, feel good when they're telling the truth. Big ball 